Here now, Kellyanne Conway, former senior counselor to President Trump, now a Fox News contributor, and Harold Ford Jr., former Democratic congressman of Tennessee, now co-host of The Five. Great to have both of you with us this afternoon. Um, you know, the age issue is, is real. It's a question that I think a lot of voters will grapple with on both sides. They're only four years apart, President Trump and uh, President Biden, although... Um, well, you know, everybody can judge uh, what they think about that. Kellyanne, you know, you were this weekend out in Las Vegas where there were a number of people who want to be the, Demo the Republican nominee um, and a lot of hankering for new leadership. Here's Nikki Haley, just one of the speakers this weekend. Watch. It's time for a younger generation to lead across the board. After the midterms, I'm more determined than ever to fight with everything I've got to bring strength back to our country. So, Kellyanne, you also spoke to the crowd. What did you have to tell them about all this? Well, I told them I'm not running for president in 2024, so I'm going to tell them what they need to know, not what they want to hear. And, look, I was steps away from Nikki Haley when she gave that address. I was steps away from Ron DeSantis when he gave his address right after her. Neither one really mentioned Donald Trump's name, but they were giving a lot of credit for the great accomplishments, particularly in an audience like that, Martha and Harold, where they are thrilled about the Golan Heights and the Abraham Accords and... President Trump being the first of seven presidents to keep a promise to move the Israeli embassy to Jerusalem and recognize it as the capital of Israel. So the president, all, President Trump also spoke by video, was very well received, um, got standing ovations. Look, I think that the Republican Party, uh, the Fo Fox News voter analysis shows that they improved their margins among Jewish voters last week or two weeks ago by six points. That's been steadily increasing along with Hispanics and African-Americans and suburban white women. So we see some of these demographic groups coming over to the party of the worker. Um, look, it's a free country. People can run for president if they like. I will tell you firsthand, it's super hard to win a presidential election. It looks easy. Donors don't choose the nominees. Voters choose the nominees. There are a heck of a lot more voters out there than there are donors. Donors are lovely people, great uh, people of integrity and quality, successful in life. But um, Kellyanne, and, my, yeah. my question is, do you think that it's time for new leadership? Uh, do you agree with that idea? Do you agree with what Nikki Haley said? Is oh, it with time? Joe Biden, with Joe Biden in the White House? Absolutely. Uh, happy 80th birthday, What about Joe on the Biden. Republican side? Joe Biden, you're every minute of 80. Happy birthday. Um, but he was just on the cusp of being 78, Dean Phillips, when he was elected two years ago. On the, I don't think it's age. I think it's ideas and policies. Joe Biden doesn't deserve a second term, Martha and Harold, because of his policies, because he has so recklessly spent trillions of dollars on things we didn't ask for or quite need. He abandoned 13 service members who died in Afghanistan and all of our equipment and intelligence on the airstrip there. People, four million people have walked across the border. We're less safe in our communities. We're less prosperous. Okay. Well, you're and, and you're, so, you're obviously so policies, you're right. There, really. There's a question of policy on both sides. Um, but there's a lot of discussion about this right now, Harold, and it, and it definitely is on people's minds. So on your side of the of the party, do you believe it's time to move on? And, you know, we did see a lot of potential candidates out in Las Vegas. Who are those people on your side? Well, first, thanks for having me on. I, um, look, I, I think if President Biden were uh, measuring up to everything uh, that seems like 58, 59, maybe 60 percent of the country may not approve of him, at least of the last poll I saw. If they approved of his policies, uh, they wouldn't care about his age. I think this is about policy acuity. And midterms are always uh, a test of the president's policies. And it seems like it was about, an, about a draw. The Republicans did get control of the House uh, by a narrow margin, it looks like. And Democrats may, in, may indeed increase their uh, margin in the Senate. They're going to keep their majority. So the country got the divided government that it wants. Who am I to say if someone's too old or too young to run? I was elected to Congress when I was 26, and they said I was too young. Uh, that was the main gripe against me against with, with my competitors in that race. So I'll let the voters make that decision. But I'll say this. This last election, what we saw was that voters, I think my takeaway from it for both parties is that people want uh, people in Washington to work together. And if you do that, you'll be rewarded. If you don't, uh, you'll lose. All right, quick, quick question. I need a quick answer on this one, Kellyanne. This is Bill Barr talking to Barry Weiss about what he thinks the former president will do if he doesn't get the nomination and someone else does. Listen. Ah, okay. The threat is simple. Unless the rest of the party goes along with him, he will burn the whole house down by leading his people out of 
out of the GOP. Trump's willingness to destroy the party if he does not get his way is based on principle, is not based on principle, but on his own supreme narcissism. So if he doesn't get the nomination, the, the former president, will he support the person who does? Yes. I think he will. But I think because of the Biden-Trump cage match rematch possibility here, Martha, you're going to hear a lot more about a third way, no labels, third parties. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, neither of the above. So those folks will be raking in the millions to pretend that this country is actually going to elect a third party candidate. It really never does. It just says it wants to. But look, I'm really proud that we have these young governors who are incredibly successful, some of whom are there. Uh, this weekend and who are doing great things. Um, but very quickly with Attorney General Barr, who I worked very closely with when he was in the administration, he wanted that job. He served President Trump and it gets lost now in all these objections. But I don't think this is about age. I think it's about acuity and I think it's about who's got the best vision forward. Biden is America, Trump's America. When were you better off? When were you paying less? When did you feel more safe and secure? All right. Thank, thanks to you both. Uh, it's the beginning of a conversation that's going to be playing out in a big way. Um, and these things tend to go faster than we think with two years out. Harold, good to see you as always. Thank you very much for being here, our friend. And Kellyanne Conway, always good to see you too, Kellyanne. Thanks very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.